Yeah, today today we're going to discuss the uh, Kundalini and, and interactions with with those not having it, how we treat and communicate with our families and friends, employers and healthcare providers about uh, the person going through a Kundalini awakening process. Uh, with that in mind. I just want to reiterate a little bit of what Kundalini is uh, about. It is about a transformation, a, a, a very strong and subtle at the same time transformation of a human being. Uh, in my opinion, it is it is the the next evolution of the human being uh, on this on this world and. People have to go through a level of, of uh, refinement in order to to be able to approach this. Uh, this experience, uh, you know, typically will start with with uh, pressure at the base of the spine, and uh, you know, rushes of energy can come up the spine and, and come out the top of the head, and then also come back down the spine, uh, creating uh, a loop, uh, for lack of a better term. And with that understanding uh, of just the physical dynamics of the Kundalini, a, a an enlightenment is occurring, and I, I spell that I N, you know, enlightenment. This is the pineal gland that is being lit up from the inside uh, through the the force of an energy that lies dormant at the base of the spine at the last three vertebrae of the tailbone. Uh, lots of pressure gets built up at the, at the tailbone area, so, so many people who are uh, approaching uh, kundalini awakening and an activation can often feel pressure at the base of the spine. When this occurs, when this enlightenment occurs, uh, many, many, many different aspects of a of a, uh, a phenomena uh, level, of a behavioral level, uh, become fairly pronounced. Uh, one begins to walk not only in the physical world with the five senses, but also in what uh, many of the ancients would call the spiritual world with, with multiple senses, far more senses than we have here uh, on the physical level. So with that in mind... Uh, how do we treat and communicate with our with our families, friends, employers, and healthcare providers while we're inside of a Kundalini awakening process? It's there are some definite risks involved with any kind of communication uh, with people who do not understand the Kundalini. When a person is having Kundalini phenomena from from uh, seeing uh, uh, spirits or or having spontaneous movements, uh, spontaneous uh, vocalizations, uh, any of the uh, of the uh, the major divine skill sets such as levitation or or telepathy or psychometry or telekinesis or any of these things. Uh, often, you know, we as individuals we'd like to communicate that, but certainly with our family, certainly with our spouse, our friends. Uh, and I'm going to counsel you not to do this so readily. You may think that a family member or a friend is ready to, to hear this this kind of a communication, uh, but most people are not, regardless of what they tell you. It's one thing to 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 actually have this and feel it in your body and and know that it's you know it's not painful or anything like that at least from a from a skill set standpoint it's quite another to actually have it and most people uh and, and uh, you know I know I'm generalizing here but I I can say that you know the the vast majority of the population doesn't necessarily want their mind to be read doesn't necessarily want you to to uh you know bring the orange across the room using telekinesis uh it would frighten them severely and you know you 
your 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 loving spouse or your family member uh might become terrified of you or at least of that part of you and it, you know it can be very 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 disruptive to relationships so with regards to the kundalini and and your interactions say with your family uh be very 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 gentle in how you approach them and how you communicate this to them do not uh you know you know try to induce kriyas in front of them or or try to to uh, initiate phenomena uh for them to believe what it is you're saying you know go beyond this level of oh i need validation from my family therefore i'm going to show them some of the really you know strange things that i can do this will not help you this will not help you and it begins to fall into a level of self aggrandizement uh which is an ego based uh situation where you try to bring uh attention to yourself uh in a way that that would you know cause you to feel special or or different than other people in a powerful way that type of a thing something that feeds the ego something that that feeds your you know the the ego's desire for being more important than other people so with regards to the phenomena of kundalini don't go too far out of your way to show others in your family or your spouse you know or a, or a, or a near dear intimate loved one that you have these skills that most of the people will just become afraid then they say oh that's nice dear but inside you know they may they may just be terrified for you thinking that that you're possessed or or things of that level so be very 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 cautious and considerate about whether or not you show family members or spouses or you know close intimate uh people in your life uh any of the kundalini uh phenomena that comes to you uh that that you had that you know by the grace of the kundalini you may be able to initiate uh on your own it doesn't help you and it certainly doesn't help them uh and with that in mind say you do say oh you know i can read your mind what you know go ahead and think of a of a sentence and i'll tell you the sentence right back well uh for for those of you that are living uh with with uh, a mother or a father or somebody who has control over your say your medical uh situation you know they just may call up the medical authorities and say oh my son or my daughter you know they something's really not right with them i i just you know i can't explain it but it's it's really it's not right and i think we need to do an intervention An intervention is when they come in an ambulance and they pretty much put you in a straitjacket and they confine your hands and they they haul you off to a psych ward where you, you know, hopefully won't be demonstrating any more of those skills. I have seen this occur. Uh not only have I seen it, I've been on the phone while you know with a kundalini person, you know, while this is occurring and so this is real and I I want you to understand that the medical authorities in the United States and in other western countries do not recognize kundalini as an actual thing what they see it as as is a spiritual emergency or our bipolarism or schizophrenia or both and basically their treatment of choice is uh severe chemical uh interdiction or or severe chemical uh drug uh use upon you they will they will give you the 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 strongest drug that they have in their in their you know large arsenal of drugs in order to quote unquote stabilize you okay and there you are you know for a for a certain amount of time being stabilized by people who have no idea and really don't want to have an idea about what it is you're going through. Uh Amelia, is this coming through okay? Hello. Yeah. Is this coming through okay? It seems to be, I think, yes. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. So as as we continue along this, it's very, very uh, important that you don't just, you know, come off to your family and, and say, oh, mom, oh, dad, or oh, husband, oh, wife, uh, look what I can do, you know, or, you know, maybe maybe even if you're, if you're seeing the entities, uh, just, you know, spiritual beings, uh, maybe you don't need to tell them about that. And I know it's difficult to be alone with this. I know it is difficult to be alone with this. But sometimes that is exactly what you must be. Not so much for the benefit of yourself, but for the benefit of those around you. Uh, we live in a, in, a, in a society that has a very narrow paradigm of what is acceptable and what isn't acceptable. And spiritual contact or telepathy or psychokinetic uh, skills are not as acceptable as you might think. They might be great for you. You mean, you know, moving objects at a distance or reading people's minds. That type of a scenario might be, hey, really great, you know. I'm really, I'm, I'm having a great time with this. But with those who are around you, it can be extremely terrifying for them. And so within a kundalini context, be very, very, very considerate of those around you and what you do uh, in regards to communicating um, the kundalini phenomena upon them. Be very considerate. You know, you know, you know if your mom or your dad are, is going to be open to this. Whether, you know, deep down, you know. Uh, and I will, I will counsel you to be very, very, very uh, private with much of this phenomena. Uh, unless you know for a fact that the that the people around you have gone through a kundalini awakening, they haven't awakened, or, or um, you know, they've read up an, enough about it or they've done the research with you so that they know, you know, they understand the idea of a spinal sweep or they understand the idea of a kriya, they understand the idea of, you know, pressure at the base of the spine, those types of things. I would be very, very uh, uh, limited in in how I would communicate uh, these special uh phenomena to people that you live with or that you're in close contact with. Uh, so certainly not all people can't hear this or, or will be terrified, but the, the vast majority would be. And this includes your psychologist, your medical doctor, uh, you know, your surgeon, your, you know, anybody in the medical field is going to see the kundalini as something that is wrong instead of something that is right. So please keep that in mind. Be very, very, very private about this, unless you know for a fact that the people you're communicating with this about can have the information uh, without scaring themselves and without incarcerating you. Uh, with employers, uh, almost across the board, I would say, they don't need to know. Now, you may be having kriyas. Uh, kriyas are spontaneous movements or vocalizations that the uh, the kundalini brings upon a person. And, and in many cases, you don't have a choice in this. Well, what I will counsel you to do is I will counsel you to talk with your kundalini just as if you're talking to another human being. You say, kundalini in me, please do not bring me kriyas while I'm at work. I will give you my nights and my days off, but during work, I must not have kriyas or I'll lose my job. And the kundalini will hear this and understand this, and you will, you will not have kriyas at work unless you break the agreement. If you break the agreement, well, then, you know, you'll probably start having uh, kundalini phenomena, you know, once again at work. So, you know, really feel that you can communicate directly with the kundalini. It hears you. It's inside you. It, it hears you. It knows what you're thinking. It, it knows what the situation is. But it does also uh, respond well to direct communication. 
uh, employers, you know, many employers will come up to you and say, oh, uh, Chris, I'm, of course, you can talk to me about anything, anything at all. And uh, and I'm here for you. You know, I really, you know, I want you to do well here on the job. And, and I, you know, any any kind of an issue that you want to talk with me about, then, then please, feel, my door is open to you. Okay. Uh, don't tell them about your kundalini. Are you on, Amelia? I can hear some... some uh, down there. Yes, I'm on. Yeah, can you mute yourself? We're, we're hearing all the movement that you're having there at the computer. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, the employers don't need to to know about your, your kundalini awakening uh, phenomena. And, and once again, you know, they're going to not be comfortable with that, you know. Or, my gosh, you know, my, my employee is reading my mind or knows my thoughts or can move this or that with the power of their mind. Uh, that does not sit well with people as, as much as, you know, you think they might like a Harry Potter world, uh, they don't. They don't. And uh, it can be very, very, very uh, frightening to them and and destabilize them. So, so once again, uh, the employers don't need to know. As, as, as we move on to the health care providers, now this is a little different. Some, very few, MDs, know about the kundalini they know about it uh they they've maybe assisted people with uh, with an awakening or and this this includes uh, uh psychologists as well and, and psychiatrists some very very few i would say maybe probably less than one percent of all of them uh they know about this and even though they're still prone to to try to treat it to, through through a chemical vector uh, some of them just say, "Oh, you're having kundalini here. You know, you don't want to drink caffeine. You don't want to. You don't want to do. You know, they'll give you certain specific uh, instructions about how to handle this." Uh, most uh, healthcare providers will not, and I would be very, very, very careful about telling a healthcare provider that you're having a kundalini awakening event because the first thing they're going to go, what is that? They may not say that to your face, but they'll certainly be thinking and they'll be going and, you know, they'll be pouring through their memory, you know, their memory database in their mind going, kundalini, kundalini, what is that? Uh, Kundalini. You know, they may take your vitals, your blood pressure, your pulse, your respiration, and then then they'll head back to their office and they'll be looking on the computer for kundalini, da-da-da-da-da, and then they'll go, oh, spiritual emergency. Oh, okay, we treat this with uh, really heavy tranquilizers and uh, possibly a stay at the psych ward. And so all of a sudden, you know, they have a mindset of, oh, okay, okay, this is what we do. This is this is the, the, the health plan that is being uh, developed for you having this wonderful, wonderful Kundalini Awakening experience. Let me, let me get, tell you a story. I met a lady... Uh, she had this beautiful kundalini awakening. She was so much in bliss and happiness. And, uh, you know, she, she was smiling all the time and laughing and just hugging people and just really, you know, having a, a really great uh, blissful experience with, with her kundalini awakening. And uh, this concerned her friends. Her friends got together and decided that well, this this is, well, we'll call her Anne. They said, "Well, Anne isn't is that's just not right. That's not how she usually is." And they got together and they did an intervention, and they had her uh, taken into a psych ward, incarcerated in a psych ward because she was too happy. Think about that. Because she was too happy. Imagine if she had demonstrated any kind of a of a of a skill set, uh divine skill set such as, you know, 
telepathy, which is one of the most common ones that occurs, uh, you know, that would have really freaked him out. And, of course, you know, when, you know, they had to have a, a you know, an MD listen to them and, oh, my gosh, she's just, she's smiling all the time and she, you know, she, you know, it's just not right. <laughs> so, so, I need you to, this is a true story. This, this lady lives here in Santa Rosa and, and uh, you know, she had to stay in the psych ward for a, a, a number of months, you know, before the Kundalini let up and, and uh, you know, and then she had to like wean herself off of these terrible, terrible SSRI uh, anti anti uh, we'll just call them anti kundalini chemical drugs. Healthcare providers typically will not have the answers for you, and this is a problem. I admit this is a problem because we in the West depend on our healthcare providers, our MDs, our psychologists, our counselors, our psychotherapists, our psychiatrists. All of these people, we depend on them to let us know that everything is okay with us. But if they don't know about a condition, well, that's a terrible, terrible thing because now, you know, you've lost this this level of comfort, this level of of security about your own health uh, that that you've been you know you've been addicted to since you were an infant. Okay, and there isn't a lot of of uh, helpful information out there about the, the actual kundalini awakening itself most of the help is directed towards uh awakening the kundalini but they don't give you any help after that and this includes kundalini yoga or sahaja or any of that stuff uh people with in the tm movement the meditators uh they do not have a lot of help for you after you've awakened the kundalini in many ways they will chastise you for even bringing it up. They will they will actually kind of mistreat you and say, oh, you're not having that. It's just your imagination. You know, and they will invalidate your kriyas. They will invalidate, you know, the things that are happening with you. So I understand. I understand that there is a paucity of information out there. I'm trying to help by, by doing these radio shows. But once again, so be very, very, very careful about who you tell about having uh, the Kundalini. Now, with with regards to to uh, interacting with 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 people uh, while you have the Kundalini, uh, Kundalini is a form of enlightenment. It's the beginning of the enlightenment process. Uh, you can... This can be transmitted to a spouse or to a friend or to a, a person that you're being intimate with or a person that is uh, has a, a proclivity towards having this, this experience. Uh, so it can do that. You don't want to do that on purpose unless you are able to to take them the whole way. I mean, you don't want to thrust somebody on a path that they're totally unprepared for, and off they go to the psych ward, and, you know, that's that's going to be a problem. That's going to be a real problem for their life. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that to people. You just want to be aware of what it is you're doing with them at all times, and and you can kind of just relax a bit. The Kundalini itself is an intelligent force, and it knows who can receive this, who should receive this, and who, you know, who maybe shouldn't receive this. And uh, many of the people that come into your space, into your social circle, um, may have a proclivity towards having this. And if and if you do see, uh, you know, say your girlfriend starts having uh, kriyas at night. Kriyas often happen at night, the spontaneous movements of, uh, caused by kundalini. And if she's just having them at nighttime, and you notice it and you go, oh, my God, she's having kriyas, just be okay with it. Be okay with it. Trust in the kundalini. Uh, it may not come to her in a full-blown measure. It may just allow her body to soak up what little 
that it is available to soak up, and that'll be it. That'll be it unless, uh, say, the two of you uh, work it into a, a marriage where you become married to this person. Uh, then, then uh, more can be given, and, and possibly more can be received. Much of the the reception is governed by the karma of the person. Uh, you know, does the does the karmic law that that they're living their life through um, allow for a kundalini awakening uh, to occur within them? Uh, are they there just to have a certain level of kundalini and be a support uh, person for you as you go into this this amazing uh, journey? So there are many, many, many different ways that the kundalini can uh, structure an awakening between two people. Uh, not necessarily uh, are they both going to to go into the enlightenment process in the same way. And they shouldn't. You know, you can have a spouse. You can have a spouse that is totally committed to you as a spouse. You can be married to them for 30 years. You can you can have children and just, you know, have this, this great life. And one spouse gets the kundalini, and the other spouse doesn't get it so much, but is supportive of it. Even within that scenario, the supportive spouse may definitely we'll, we'll get some kundalini into them, you know, through the intimacy, through through day-to-day interactions. But whether it expresses itself into a full-blown awakening, well, that's that's not necessarily a guarantee. They may get kriyas at night. They may have uh, pressure at the base of the spine. They may feel the third eye beginning to open a little bit. They may uh, they may feel some energetic phenomena, but they don't necessarily get to go into the whole uh, the whole awakening simply because it is not yet time for them to do that. The time for them is to have these little pieces. A little bit of Kundalini goes a long way, a very 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 long way. So I just wanted to uh, to mention that and. And if you do have a a loved one that that you're intimate with, and uh, they start going into the whole process, well then, then I will suggest that you go to the Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one dot com, and have them read that information. Do not buy into any of the fear uh, um, scenarios that are out there in the internet. This does not have to be a fearful event. This can be a very, very blissful, beautiful uh, event in a person's life, a majorly beautiful event in a person's life. Think about it. This is the beginning of the enlightenment process of a person. Uh, so this really isn't set up to be a horrid, terrible, ter- a terrible experience. Okay, This is set up to be a very beautiful, very loving, very, very... Amazing experience, but you know we're sensitive people at the beginning of the awakening, and at the beginning of the awakening, we can we can be open to programming to some degree, and uh, as I mentioned in the safeties, really watch what levels of programming you allow yourself to be around, um, and in many cases, you know you, you got some of these folks that are you know talking about a Kunda Tigwador and you know how this is terrible. You know they take one man's opinion and they they make that the you know the the major opinion in their lives and and, and then it's that opinion becomes a formative uh, uh, expression within them and so they they begin to have the fearful experiences. They begin to have the uh, you know the the hurtful. Uh, Outlook with regard to the Kundalini and leading into a Kundalini syndrome type scenario. Uh, so I would really avoid anything that is fear-based or fearful or or something that is going to try to corrupt your beautiful experience. Uh, uh, you know, with something less. Now, if you have the, the entities coming at you, I can understand the entity. 
the 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 spiritual being uh experience just can be out and out frightening to anybody whether whatever your programming is and uh in that situation um once again, I would direct you to the website. Um, I would direct you to a teacher that has had the entities. Typically, you won't get rid of the entities. You evolve through them. So which means, by, what I mean by that is when you're evolving through the entity or the spiritual being uh, phase of the Kundalini, and it, and it is a phase, When you by evolving through it, you're just not paying attention to them. You're not listening to them, even though you can hear them, you don't listen to them, i.e., you don't do what they ask you to do, you don't respond to their screaming or their torment or whatever it is that they do, you don't do that. You just stick to the middle path. You're, it, imagine yourself to be on a canoe in the middle of a river, and you stay in the middle of that river, you don't go to either side, you don't park the boat on the shore at all, because you know that's where all the entities are. So, you stick to this middle path, this middle pillar, and uh, you will eventually phase out of that of that lower astral region or this area where lots of the uh, entities are. So, and, and you certainly don't tell anybody about these entities that you're experiencing. So definitely watch your programming with that. Uh, and that includes the people that you're around. You have to understand that we're talking about how you are, you are around the people that that you love and your, your employers and the the men don't tell your medical doctor that you have you're seeing spiritual phenomena that's that's a guarantee that's a guarantee for a for a trip to the psych ward and in the states i don't know about other countries but in the united states they can just if you're at a medical doctor's office and you you say oh yeah and I'm seeing these spiritual beings and they're talking to me and you know doing all of these different things and is you know uh, what do you think I should do you know and he's on the phone to the local psych ward they can hold you for 72 hours they can take you in induct you into this psych ward feed you drugs and observe you for 72 hours or or longer depending on what that MD you know decides. And so I would be very, very, very cautious about mentioning this to anyone except a person who you know has gone through it. So that's that's with the the entity stage. Now with the, uh, you know, we, we were talking a little bit about having the energy rub off on people. Uh, I have a gentleman who, who's asking me if I can... This is this is Mike uh, from the Kundalini Awakening Systems One group on on uh, Facebook, and uh, one of the questions uh, that he's talking about is uh, when you're when you're say you're a cab driver and and uh, and uh, you're having a full blown Kundalini, and people come like say your fares come in contact with that Kundalini. And what it will do often is it will amplify some of the issues that they're thinking about at that time, you know, what emotional issues that they're having at that time. And, and if these, these issues are amplified to the point that, you know, they may not feel comfortable in, in, the, in, in the cab and, and they would want to leave. Uh, other people, you know, would come into the cab and you've got to remember everybody's different. And they all respond differently to to uh, energetic stimulus and amplification. And an, another person would receive a healing from that. Um, what you do in that scenario is you just you let the Kundalini process itself decide how um, things are going to be. Except except for the fact that if you do see somebody that's in obvious pain. You can give them a blessing. You can just say a prayer, you know. Uh, oh, divine Kundalini, give that person uh, the amount of love that they can have and hold at this time. I, you know, you can you can say that kind of a prayer. You don't try to apply it to them. You don't try to to make them have it. You don't even say it. Say the prayer to them. You say it to your Kundalini. 
and you trust that the the conscious, intelligent force that is the kundalini within you will give to that person what they need. And uh, let me tell you something about that. Um, often, you know, when I'm driving down the freeway in, in Northern California, um, I will feel pulled to do a certain thing for people that are, you know, maybe I'm going past an accident and the kundalini will pull itself out of my chest and go to those people that are in distress. It knows what's going on. It absolutely knows what is going on. Another another example is I've been pulled off of the freeway, directed to go to the to the nearest hospital, and go into uh, many hospitals have a prayer room or a church, uh, you know, in the hospital. And I've been directed to go into these places and to just sit and meditate and be there at the same time that another person is having severe severe hardship. You know, in one case, uh, a gentleman had, you know, his whole family had been in an accident except him, and they were they were all in the ER at that very moment. And uh, he was just falling to pieces, and he needed that help. And the kundalini directed me to go there and be there and just to give him that radiance. And I didn't touch him. All I did was just go into the into the chapel and meditate and pray. I made eye contact and smiled, and, which was returned. And uh, that's all it took. Okay? So within that context, you really need to trust your kundalini. Uh, it will go out to the people that, that you're around, and it will give to them what they can have and hold at that time. Your ego does not need to help the kundalini and the kundalini doesn't need your ego to help it so just so you know this this is how is most appropriate uh, to to do this now when you're with a loved one when you're with a loved one um or you're you're with a uh, a a person that is doing uh say yoga with you or you're having, you know, you're not married to them, but you may be having a intimate contact, sexual contact. Uh, once again, once again, uh, you need to be okay with the kundalini doing what it's going to do. Yes, yes, there may be some some specific uh, activity, energetic activity in the person. And it may be that they begin to to come into a kundalini uh, expression, and if that is the case, then you you are duty bound. You you have the responsibility now of teaching them or helping them onto a path that is safe for them. Uh, they may not want you as a teacher. They may prefer to have you as a lover, but not as a kundalini teacher. And so, you need to direct them to the information uh, that will be you know, the best for them at, at at this point in their life. And you need to be okay with what happened. You don't need to go into guilt over this because uh, the, the kundalini knows. It knows that, oh, okay, uh, Jenny and John there, well, John's kundalini active and he's having uh, intimate contact with Jenny and now Jenny is starting to have kundalini uh, awakening features. Well, okay, John. John, you need to start giving her some some good information, positive information. Always, always give positive information, loving information, considerate information. There is enough fear in this world. Fear is not hard to come by. There is not a deficit of fear in this world. And so always go for the positive. Always go for the loving. Always go for the considerate response. Always. Okay? And if that person needs to karmically experience fear, well, don't worry. They'll get it. They'll get the teaching. But they probably don't need to get that from you. So be very careful and very considerate and very courteous and very giving and very generous in your love for that person. Very, very considerate for, for your love with that person. And they... You know, it may cause you to split up with them. It may not. Uh, but you just need to trust 
what is occurring with the Kundalini itself. Trust the Kundalini. Okay. So whether you're doing uh, yoga or Tai Chi or dancing or partner yoga or push hands or that type of yoga where, the, you know, you you lay on your back and one partner gets onto your feet and, you know, I think it's called flying yoga or something like that. Uh, all of the all of that type of activity can induce a transfer of kundalini, but once again, it is really kind of beyond your control. But the other thing I do want to say is, in the ancient cultures, a person having kundalini awakening would would go into the wilderness. They would go away from people. They would want to go away from people, um, but we don't have that options so much here in our society uh, you know we're not psychologically prepared to go out into the wilderness and live in a cave uh, some of us could do it for sure so the whole reason for this discussion is to kind of give give some some uh, ideas and some information to you who have the kundalini uh, in how to not get yourself in trouble with it and how not to really push a fear-based paradigm onto those around you who may uh, who may experience it uh, to to some degree. Um, once again, you know, with your families, with your intimate uh, contacts, if you don't feel that they're psychologically able to have this, then don't tell them about it. Don't tell them. Certainly don't tell your employers or your health care providers unless you know for a fact that they know what Kundalini is. So the one thing with your health care provider, you say, do you know what Kundalini is? You know, and they may try to, you know, they may know. They may know it through the auspices of Kundalini Yoga. Okay, they may know it through that. Uh, but that is not awakened Kundalini. Kundalini Yoga is all about awakening the Kundalini. And then, you know, they don't give you a lot of help after you've done that. Uh, typically, I'm, I'm sure that there are some uh, who do, who do know how to to give some advice for those who have awakened it. But for, for the most part, no. Uh, so, you know, there you there you have that. Uh, Santara, are there any callers? No, Chris, and no callers at this time. Okay, thank you, thank you. No, so can... let me... So let me continue um, with this type of, of a, a phenomena that's displayed by through you by the Kundalini. You need to understand that this isn't for everybody at the same time. Not everybody on this world should have Kundalini at the same time that you're having it. To reach Kundalini, a person has had to have gone through a series of refinement processes. And in many cases, this is a lifetime uh, of refinement. So, so, you know, whether or not you believe in reincarnation, you know, I, you know I, to me it's a fact. It's, a, it's an absolute fact. And so over the course of many different lifetimes, a person will go into the refinement processes that will eventually uh, come out as a kundalini awakening, awakening event as they have that process uh, begin to bloom within them. So, so you know, going back to Jenny and John, well, John, you know, this is John's life to have the awakened kundalini, but it may not be Jenny's. She may still be in that refinement process very, very important to allow her the space to have that refinement process, to allow her to practice charity and love and grace and to to work on conquering her fears or her you know, some of the issues of the ego such as greed and control and and corruption or any of those types of, of, of events. Now often you will not attract those people to you. Uh, within a kundalini context, uh, but sometimes you will. Sometimes you will. And, and uh, you know, that that is as it is. 
but you, being the Kundalini Awakening person, you need to take a step back and kind of, well, why am I in this relationship? Is this just for uh, hedonistic sex? Is this all this is about? Is just sex? Well, then I would I would counsel you to to gently remove yourself from that contact, only because you know love needs to be the active force behind any kind of intimate involvement that you may uh, put yourself into or give yourself into. So that means you know maybe not uh, having so much of the bar scene happening. You know the single scene, the one night stand scene. Uh, you may you may want to to redefine uh, how you see pleasure or how you seek out uh, other people to 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 be in your social circle with. Uh, and and if you find yourself with a spouse uh, who is very very unsupportive of the Kundalini, I just want you to know that it is not a guarantee that the Kundalini will divide you or to split you up with that spouse, but it does occur. It does occur, uh, but it is not a guarantee. Um, what, will, what can happen is that if the spouse is actively trying to stop or to get in the way of your Kundalini awakening process, the Kundalini itself, will begin to cause separation sequences to occur between the two of you. And, you know, it, it's it's really, really important to communicate to your spouse, you know, that that, uh, that you require certain levels of, of uh, honesty and integrity and love and, and strength and union and confidence in in the relationship and that, even if you're experiencing certain things that they don't understand, they need to still stand with you and be okay with it and not try to, you know, have you taken away in an ambulance. So otherwise, yeah, the Kundalini can separate you quite effectively. And, you know, so that is that is something to be concerned with. The other thing is is with if you're a, if you're a, uh, if you're living with your parents, you're a younger person, you're living with your parents, and you're you're having this phenomena. You know, it's very important that if they are not in a psychological or emotional position to really understand and begin to to accept your new uh, behavior modifications. Uh, you know, that's the kundalini will begin to work on them. If you, if there is not the option of a separation sequence, like it would be with a with a couple, uh, if you're a younger person living with your parents, the kundalini will will begin to work on the parents themselves, just enough so that they can accept what it is that you're having. But that doesn't mean that you just you know you just let it all hang out because you know. You t- trust the Kundalini to do the work. You, as an ego person, do not do that work. Okay, that is not something that they're prepared to, for you to share with them. You know, their their darling, dear daughter or son, you know, doesn't need to come up to them and say, "Oh, mom, I'm seeing dead people." You know, that's just that that's not going to work for them. And don't look for for validation for your process in that way. Don't look for validation in your process from any of the people that that you talk with or that you communicate with or that you meet with in your life. You don't need their validation. And if they have kundalini, they have experience with the kundalini, you can certainly get information from them. And and through that information, you know, as it as it uh, as it aligns with your information. Uh, you can get validation, you know, that way, but but I, I would I would strongly uh, uh, caution you. Certainly, I'm not going to say don't do this, but I'm going to caution you not to look for validation uh, from people not having kundalini about your kundalini experience because they have no reference point for it. You know, there are those there are those rare wise people that. Even though they don't have the kundalini, they can just say, well, you know, just kind of go with the flow and, and try to stay in balance and be a good person, an ethical person, a happy person, a loving person. 
and that you can trust in the effects of those behaviors upon this spiritual thing that you may be ha- have happening to you. And that is all good advice. That is all very good advice. And um, and I would I would I would certainly uh, support that kind of advice uh, being given to to all of you that are listening to this. Um, and with that in mind, uh, I would also, because we we are here and, and you are listening to me, I would I would have you go to the safety protocols at the Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one dot com, and uh, go to the left hand menu and you'll see the safeties option there. Look at those safeties, print those safeties out, copy those safeties, and you will find. Uh, uh, many levels of communication that you're being given to to practice uh, as you go through your through your kundalini awakening uh, expression. Uh, behavior modifications such as forgiveness, how you can forgive uh, the people that don't understand your kundalini awakening experience. They don't understand it. They don't want to understand it. They are not supportive in any way, shape, or form and you know this can this can engender a lot of frustration in you, a lot of frustration and fear, you know, because you're alone and you don't have anybody to talk with about this, and it's you know you just it it can be very 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 uh, desolate in that way. I remember it was desolate for me uh, in my early early part of my awakening sequence. So forgive them. Forgive them and tolerate. You know, if you've made the mistake of, you know, not the mistake. I don't classify it as a mistake. If you've accidentally tell them, told a, a parent or a spouse or a friend that, oh yeah, you know, you know, I, I uh, sometimes I feel like I'm floating in the air, and you know, all of a sudden you get all the levitation jokes. You know, hey, can you float on over to the cupboard and get me a glass? Uh, you know, things like that, and you know, things that that go in, maybe they're not meant to be hurtful, but they can be received that way because you're so sensitive with the Kundalini right now. I mean, you're so sensitive. So the, the best thing that you can do is really to embrace forgiveness and tolerance and patience in your interactions with with your family and your friends, your employers, your 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 healthcare providers. Be forgiving. Be tolerant. Be patient. Trust your process. Trust your Kundalini awakening process. Uh, it is. It knows you. It knows your surroundings. Knows your environment. It will still challenge you. Just because it knows you and you know that it knows you doesn't mean that you're not going to get some some karmic uh, balancing that needs to be done, that needs to be secured. Uh, any of you listening to this can email me. You can email me at kfireforall, that's K-F-I-R-E-F-O-R-A-L-L at yahoo.com. Uh, or you can join any of the groups that Santara uh, mentioned at the beginning of the program, uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at yahoogroups.com. Uh, the Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 on Facebook, uh, Kundalini Awakening Exclamation Point on Facebook. There's also a Kundalini Ashram on Facebook, um, Kundalini Healing on Facebook. You're all welcome to join any of those communities. Uh, it's not always easy to feel that you can't tell your spouse or your family or your friends everything that's happening to you. In our society, we're used to doing that. We're used to kind of like, you know, divulge all. And in this case, it may not be the best thing for you or for them. Uh, you know, they may, you know, they may be at the Ouija board level of spiritual uh, seeking. And, uh, you know, this is you know this is probably one of the worst things you could do, but uh, you know, coming from a very 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 strong uh, spiritual experience, uh, and then and then talking to a person that 
doesn't really have an idea, maybe a, you know, an interest, but not a real strong idea about what is occurring, can be damaging to that person because they will want to reach for the kundalini based upon you know how you how you may be talking about it, and this can can they can be stepping into a a a, a uh, an experience that can be so challenging to them that it, it can be a devastation. Okay, and I don't want your friends to be devastated because you know you you start to go into kundalini with them. Um, yes, it is a beautiful, loving, excellent experience, but you have to be able to control how you think. Sometimes you have to be able to control your thoughts. You have to be able to control how you feel about fear. And what I mean by control is, is there's a level of discipline that allows a thought to be excused or allows the thought to become manifest. And this is a discipline that that people with the Kundalini Awakening process need to learn, need to learn. And and people who are coming into Kundalini without that learning can, can have a very, very, very difficult time learning it. Okay? Most of the time... Uh, in our society, the Western societies, uh, our thoughts are, are considered to be private to us. With Kundalini, that's not the case, at least from a phenomenal level. You know, from a from a larger spiritual context, no thoughts are private. Everybody, everybody's thoughts are read and, and disseminated throughout the multiverse. But within a human-to-human context, oh, yes, we have that expectation of privacy. And if some person with a kundalini uh, awakening expression comes along and starts reading our thoughts, well, that's that's an invasion of privacy. And you may want to look at that. I mean, you know, except for the fact when you're walking through a mall and you're partaking of all these different thoughts coming at you, that's different. You're not doing it on purpose. It's the kundalini that is opening up that aspect. And so you have no real say in that. And, and actuality, that's not the most comfortable form of telepathy. You know, it has no filtration. You know, you get the child molesters, you get the criminals, you get the angels, you get you get the, the saints. You know, you, you, you get it all. And sometimes you get it all at the same time. And... Uh, that can be quite confusing for for people experiencing it. So I would counsel you not to to go that way with it. Uh in regards to to um um going uh, going into the telepathic experience uh from an ego based perspective. Allow the kundalini to give to you what it feels that you can hold. Now, let's see, I'm going to some of the other questions here. That uh, One of the main vectors of transmission of kundalini is through the sexual congress of two people. Um, and this doesn't, this doesn't really, uh, to some degree, uh, uh, it follows a male-female type of scenario. Uh, you may you may look at it from a say a, a, uh, an electrical point of reference. So there needs to be a positive and a negative. Okay, when the positive and the negative become one, uh, that is when the kundalini uh, begins. And this is what tantra is about. Tantra is using the uh, the sexual uh, congress of two people as a methodology for awakening the inner divine, which is the kundalini, the inner divine. And as we, as a person does the tantra and both partners, you know, are doing the tantra and then having having that experience, well, then the kundalini uh, can be invited into that experience. And very, you know, not always, but actually, you know, it's still fairly rare within tantra. Uh, you know, one partner or the other can activate uh, or both can activate at the same time, which is nice. But you, you also have to understand that that it's not just through tantra that that can occur. You know, it, it is through the the casual touch. 
standing in line behind a person in the grocery store. Okay. Um, you got up that morning. You did your whole life. You went to work. You you got off of work. You got in your car. You drove to the grocery store. And this other person did the exact same thing. You don't know each other at all. You're standing next to this person in line. And their kundalini becomes activated just through being next to you. That occurs. It's not your fault. You have no responsibilities with that. You don't even know about it, typically. Okay, so this occurs. And so the most important thing that you can do is to keep yourself in a positive, loving, calm frame of mind. Once again, thought control. Okay, in the safeties, you'll you'll notice a, a portion of the safeties that talks about inner joy. Uh, abbreviated as IJ. So you go to the IJ, the inner joy, and you just kind of stay in that space. You stay in the memory of that beautiful event that occurred with you. Think of the most beautiful place that you've ever been to that that has really given you a, a level of love and, and experience of love that that is not common for your life. And you just you stay in that space and you stay in that memory and you and you the kundalini will amplify that. So it's easy to stay there. And then as you as you stay in that loving grace, uh, the people that you activate will be activated through a loving grace rather than, you know, if you're just like, oh, you're, my boss at work today was so bad. And it's like, oh, geez, you know, oh. You know, and you may have levels of anger and levels of anxiety. Um, yeah, try to try to to find your forgiveness there. Try to find your tolerance there. You know, try to find those those uh, those levels of of working through your emotional issues, so that when you stand in line next to a person, and or you're doing your yoga, or your partner, any of the social activities that you do on a conscious level, but even when you're unconsciously just standing in line waiting for the checkout to open up that you're giving off these positive vibrations. And you will reap that benefit, my friends. You will reap that benefit. That positivity will come straight into you. Okay? That's the gift of the kundalini. The positivity that you give to others is mirrored back to you. And so this goes through all the levels of... um, of communication. Uh, one 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 area that I didn't cover and that I'm being compelled to cover right now is uh, if, if there are those of you that go to church and you talk to your pastor, your priest, or your reverend. I think that's that's as many of the uh, titles that I know about uh, the churches. If you go to your pastor, your reverend, or your priest, and you talk to them about kundalini and they don't have kundalini, they're going to tell you it's of Satan. It is of the devil. And, you, you know, if you're in a, you know, in a belief system that recognizes Satan or the devil, uh, you don't necessarily want to tell them about this, even though it is of a spiritual um, nature. You know, bless their hearts, they're doing as best they can do within the religion that they espouse, but they don't know kundalini. They don't know kundalini, and they don't, in many cases, in many belief systems, they do not feel that enlightenment of a, of a, of a regular person can even exist. So these are, once again, these are people that you, you need not uh, approach with regards to kundalini. They don't understand it. And what they don't understand, uh, they can often fall into fear of. So I would counsel you not to go to, once again, to go to people who do not understand the Kundalini, have no reference point for it. Uh, in the Christian Bible, there is no direct reference for Kundalini. You can find it. Yeah, I mean, if you have Kundalini and you let the Kundalini guide you through the King James Version, well, then you can find Kundalini all over the place. But if 
you know, if you don't have the Kundalini, like say a reverend or a priest or a priestess or a pastor, they may not have that reference, and so they wouldn't know to find it. And they would, they would, they may, they may put a very negative spin uh, or, or interpretation on what it is that you're experiencing. So really, 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 um, pastors and reverends and priests, they are just like you. They're just people struggling to find a, a way uh, uh, that that is helpful and hopefully helpful and and considered for other people, but they don't have this information yet. And perhaps they shouldn't have this information yet. Once again, not everybody will have kundalini at the same time. We all have different karma. And the karma is what will, in, in many ways, control how much kundalini and, and you know, what, what degree of an activation or awakening we get to have, if at all. If at all. Okay, everybody comes to this with different, with different experiences, with different uh, karma, so to speak. And so what, you know, one person will have kriyas, another person will have entities, another person will have, you know, you know telepathy, you know, all these different skill sets, you know. People will have these things come onto them. Unbidden. Okay. So that is an indication of, of, of the differences that we, we come to the table with, and yet we're all having a very similar experience. You know, one person may have Kriyas, uh, uh, you know, this week, and, and another person, you know, may just be starting to have them. Another person may have the entities and be moving into to uh, – to another aspect or another gift from the kundalini. And I call these gifts, these siddic skills or these divine skills, these skill sets. These are gifts, but they are there to be used for the purpose of helping other people, not enabling them, but helping them, helping them in a way that is guided through your kundalini to be given to that other person. Once again, we need to keep our ego in check. Ego does, you know. Ego may want everybody to feel lovely and happy, and, and and never have a problem for the rest of their lives. And frankly, that's just not the scenario in this world. We have to have trouble. It's how we grow. We have to be able to overcome adversity. It's how we are. It's how we gain our strength and our knowledge. Okay. And so, you know, you won't be allowed as a Kundalini awakening person to. Um, Make the way completely easy for the people around you. You're not allowed to do that. They have to be able to live the life and to to go through the challenges that they're here to experience. And your kundalini knows their karma better than you do. So it's always best to just put your ego on the shelf and trust that the kundalini knows best what is for them. Uh, through love-based applications such as healing. Even then, the kundalini knows, but it also knows that you are there, and they are there, and they are there in your presence, and it, there's a healing that is that is being set up, and then the kundalini will facilitate that. Okay. So this is how we treat and we communicate with our families and friends and employers and health care providers. This is just a thumbnail sketch of it. You know, I mean, how much can you fit into half, you know, an hour and a half? Uh, but this should give you somewhat of an outline on how to work with this uh, and how to surrender to the Kundalini. Kundalini knows that, that Jenny and John are together. Jenny's Kundalini knows and John's Kundalini knows. Okay, but the, the Kundalini also knows the karmic responsibilities that that person has to work with in this life. John's ego does not know it, and Jenny's ego does not know it, and that is by design. That is by design. That allows for a person to go through this life and have an honest experience uh, that allows them to make the, the, the definitive choices and decisions that they need to make in their life in order to allow their spiritual evolution to progress or digress. Okay. 
progress or digress. It doesn't, there isn't a judgment there. Sometimes our spiritual evolution is is, uh, represented as a sine wave. You have your peaks and your valleys. Sometimes you're you're evolving, sometimes you're you're not. And there's no judgment there. There's just learning and evolving and, and, and allowing these things to occur. Your kundalini will compel you to do certain things with people. And I want you to follow that 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 compelling and often it'll pull from the heart. You'll feel a a a, a tremendous pull like that. Like a hand has reached into your heart and is and is pulling your heart through your chest and and uh you'll be able to follow quite clearly where that pull is taking you um as as what happens with me you know pass, passing an accident on the road or things like that. Yes, those people needed to have that accident or they wouldn't be having it, but also because I happen to be in the proximity, the radiance in me wants to go and, and help them with their pain or with their healing or whatever. The psycho the psychological impact, the emotional impact. So this is allowed and this is given. And so basically uh, I'm saying is to take your ego out of the control seat here. Let your love take over. Let your consideration take over. Okay, let your fearlessness take over, let your strength take over, you know, strength in your commitment and your surrender to the kundalini. Once you have kundalini, it is a lifelong experience. You don't get to have kundalini one summer and then say, oh, yeah, yeah, I did kundalini last summer. It was fun. It was fun. Yeah. So uh, do we have any callers, uh, Santara? No, there's no callers, but there was uh, those questions from Sigrid from last week's show, if I can ask them. Sure, please. Thank you. Okay. So this was in connection with entities. She said that John and herself thoroughly enjoyed that week's show, and they have enjoyed all the others. And the questions are, John is unclear as to whether you should ignore all entities, and Sigurd says she thinks that you stated some entities were good and some were bad, and she presumes some entities could be guardians or guides. So if you can't distinguish which is which, should you ignore all of them? And the other question regarding entities is whether they are present in the dream state or the awake state, should you treat them in the same way? Um, Kundalini will often send entities into a person's dream life. Uh, typically there will be a scenario that is set up. Uh, you know, okay, they find themselves on a farm uh, in, you know, on a prairie and, and uh, you know, an entity is sent to them to do such and such. Um, in the dream state, if the entity is, is has a, has a, a defined purpose to scare you or something like that. Well then that is that is an invitation to show strength and fearlessness. Okay, so basically you don't buy into the programming of entities. You just don't buy into it. Uh they they can come in the dream state, absolutely without a doubt. And they can come in the waking state as well. Uh good entities will know that you're having a kundalini experience and they will not interfere with you. They will not try to guide you. They know that the kundalini, the divine within, does not need their help to guide you. The entities that are offering more of a challenge will try to directly take you off the path. They will, they will, they will suggest that you kill yourself. They will, they will tell you that you're a horrible person, that that uh, that they are in complete control of you and that you have no choice in it and that they own you and da 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 and you just need to just blow them off. You may hear them because you're being tele you're, you know you're being given telepathic uh, skills, but it doesn't mean you have to act on anything that they say. Do not talk back to them. Uh, just ignore them. Ignoring them is the worst thing that you can do for them. Well, it, it actually, it, it just takes away their reason for being. Sorry, somebody's 
somebody's revving a, a motor out here. Um, so, so with that in mind, yeah, you can you can just walk that middle path as I mentioned earlier with the entities. Do not recognize them. There's only the only entities uh, in the dream state or in the physical state that you really need to recognize are those different forms that the kundalini will take, uh, often apex predators, the uh, the tiger, the lion, the panther, the wolf, the, the wasp, the spider, the snake, uh, these things, the orca, the whale, these apex predators are what the kundalini uses to communicate with you. In addition to the humanoid, the humanoid uh, uh, version, such as a, uh, a dancing young woman or, uh, uh, you know, Shakti Shiva, and there are many, the many pictures that, that we see of them, or Christ and Mary, or, you know, those types of divine personages are also uh, often given to people. And, and those, you know, pay attention to what's being said. You know, if they're saying, be forgiving, be forgiving, be loving, be helpful to each other, you know, be truthful, be honest, be have integrity. Or they're saying, you know, make sure you kill your husband before you get up. <laughs> so it's a fairly obvious thing. You don't uh you don't listen to them unless they're saying something that is positive and and, and unless they're of a kundalini nature, a, a divine personage. And these divine personages rarely will say anything like what I just said. Rarely at all. Uh kundalini opens you up to this to these areas and and what you're being taught now is to have discernment. By ignoring them, it doesn't mean that you're not being discerning. It means that you know, ignoring takes an effort. It takes an effort to to go, oh, okay, that over there is not important to me. I need to look straight ahead. Okay. Uh, in the dream life, it's different often because there is a teaching that is being given. If you have kundalini, every dream that you have contains a kundalini education and i'll have to do another program on on uh, dream interpretation with kundalini because it is completely different than what the standard western psychic uh, type of dream interpretation manuals represent it is completely different uh and that should kind of give you an idea about uh the dream scenario with kundalini uh, out of body experiences you can you can meet entities in the out of body experience as well uh but you will be guided there is a there is a level of guidance that is provided during the out of body experience because it is known it is known that you're 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 like a babe in the woods and so you're not going to just be thrown to the wolves especially when you have the guidance take you to certain places though they give you certain teachings uh and uh, you know this is very beneficial. So with regards to the entities, though, uh, it is best not to converse with them, not to look at them, not to do anything with them, uh, and to walk that middle path. Be in balance. Within the dream state, look for the teaching. And uh, and uh, Sigrid and John, I will I will uh, I will write some more on the groups about uh, dream interpretation. Uh, with the Kundalini, because as you're both having it, I can understand that this would be a, this would be a very positive uh, um, level of information for you to have. Uh, and I will ask the, the both of you, if you, if, you know, if you have uh, entities that are that are coming to you or asking you to do certain things, and if if you have a level of discernment, you know, question about your level of discernment. Just contact me and let me know, and I will talk with you about that. Are there other uh, questions, Amelia? No, Crimson, that's it. Oh, good. Wow, you're coming through really clear right now. That is great. That is great. Uh, once again, everyone, I'd like to apologize for the uh, for our sound quality at the beginning of the show. I'm not quite sure what is going on with that. I do know one thing, though, and this is this is another show is uh, the kundalini will interrupt with electrical devices. It will. And this, this will happen to you. It can crash your computer. It can crash your cell phone. It, it, you know, it can 
it definitely has a the ability to interfere with electrical components, including your car. So just that's just an FYI for you. And, and this may be what is occurring uh, before we start each program. <laughs> so just bear with us. Bear with us. With you know, let us let let us get through the beginning of the program, and uh, and it should clear up with you. I I would like to uh, thank you for listening. I'd like you to thank. I'd like to thank you, Amelia Centara, for for you know doing the studio work. Thank you very much. Thank, uh, thanks to your family uh, for supporting you in this process. I would like to thank everybody who's listening to us in the archives. Hello, hello, and thank you for listening. I would invite everybody to to ask any kind of a question that they would like to ask with regards to the Kundalini. Um, the next show, it uh, looks like it's been scheduled for Tuesday, but I think I'm going to make it Wednesday. Was there a reason why we went for Tuesday on that? Amelia? No, it was Wednesday. I, I'm not too sure what happened there, Chris. When I looked okay. today, it was suddenly Tuesday. Yeah, so we'll change that yeah. to Wednesday, just the normal okay. time. And uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. And uh, any of the other uh, uh, vectors of, of information, uh, such as the Facebook groups, they're all basically under... Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 uh, at Facebook or at Yahoo, um, at the uh, the dot .com website. Uh, this is free information, folks. This is You're not being charged for this. I know for a fact that people are taking the information that are, that's given here and taking the information, writing books so that they can charge you for the information that I'm giving you right here, right now. So take this. Use this, metabolize this, allow this to to really begin to shape your reality and the way that you interact with the kundalini that's expressing through you. Be very, very, very considerate of the people that you communicate with. An awakened kundalini person is like a, a light that is shining in the darkness and as you know, if you've ever, you know, anywhere, really, you'll see the insects surrounding the light. Well, those insects are, are like some of the entities that you see, that, that you hear me talking about, but also some of the people as well. Some of the people will just want to be around you. They'll want to touch you. They'll want to be with you. They'll want to listen to you. And that's okay. That is divinity. Divinity is the light that attracts everything, everything. Even when that cab driver is driving down the streets of San Francisco and, you know, people are having a great experience, you know, in that person's presence because of the kundalini, that's, that is it. That's, that's what it's about. And, and if they're having a not-so-pleasant experience, it's because they have issues that they need to work on and these issues are being brought up for them. Okay. So be very gentle with your with your parents, with your grandparents, with your brothers, sisters, your spouse, your girlfriend, your boyfriend. Uh, be very, very considerate and discerning in what level of information about your Kundalini awakening experience that you get to them. Do they need to know that you're you're telepathic? Does that do they need to know that? Do they need to know that you can make an orange fly across the room? Is is that is that something they need to know? Is that something maybe the ego is is, is wants to 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 shout out to people? You know, do they need to know that you see the entities that are surrounding them? You know, their their deceased person, you know, deceased spouse or whatever. Do you, do they need to know that? Maybe maybe they need to maybe just let go of those attachments that that death is our is a gift and it allows us to let go of our attachment. Okay, so be very 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 discerning about informative levels that you give to people around you. Try as best as you can to be in your inner joy when you're in public. You 
won't always be successful, and, and, and that's okay. It's all right. I'm not asking you to be successful all the time. I'm just asking you to keep it in mind. Be that loving, considerate, helpful individual. And those qualities will be reflected back to you. And once again, I'd like to thank you for listening. And Amelia, I'm going to to sign off. Uh, thank you once again for your work on the air. And you're very you, welcome. Every thank you. Yeah, and uh, thank you everybody for listening. Bye bye. Thank you everybody, and see you again, or hear you again next week on next week's show. Bye for now. <laughs>